We have bought two gliders on AliExpress for a price of about 2 euros each. The wingspan of these aircraft is 48 centimeters. We have built a biplane aircraft. The ailerons have been cut directly from the wings. On the top, wooden sticks have been placed to define the hinge line. In addition, strips of thick packing tape have been arranged to fix the hinge. We have also placed wooden sticks to reinforce the wings, tail, and stabilizers. First, we mount the structure of two wings, with a vertical separation of 9 cm. When inserting the fuselage between the wings, we set a little decalage for the horizontal stabilizer. If the decalage is too big, the tail will create a very big moment backwards. Then we should move the center of gravity forward so that the main wing compensates for this moment. If the decalage is too little, the tail will create little backwards moment and the center of gravity will be too aft. The errors in the decalage angle can always be counteracted by the elevator angle, but this situation is avoided, so that the transition between the stabilizer and the elevator is as smooth as possible. Next, we add the elevator. To decide where we place the servo for the elevator, we add the electronic items in the longitudinal axis. We notice that, even placing the servo at a backward position, the center of gravity would be somewhat ahead of the first third of the wing cord. Therefore, we move the position of the servo backwards as much as possible, because there is a lack of weight in the tail. In order to motorize the plane, we use a brushless motor F10820. We mount a propeller 5 inches in diameter and 4 inches in pitch. The battery is 2 cells and 350 mAh. The ESC is 12 amps. The servos are 3.7 grams. When motoring the aircraft, we try to set the motor thrust line so that it passes through the center of gravity of the plane. This way, the motor thrust does not create any moment on the aircraft. Therefore, the balance of moments in the gliding will be the same as the balance of moments with the motor running. This led us to glide the plane when we cut the throttle. The battery has been moved down as much as possible, and the ESC has been inserted into the nose to move down the center of gravity and place it at the same height as the thrust line. To check this, we turn the plane on its side and check if the line on which it is balanced coincides with the thrust line. To finish the structure, we put some pieces of EVA rubber, which will cushion the landings. When calculating the wing loading, it should be taken into account that the tips of the wings do not generate lift due to the vortex that is created in them. In a monoplane aircraft, there are only two wing tips, and we can assume that 20% of the wingspan is useless for the purpose of lift. In a biplane, we have four wing tips, so we lose 40% of the total wingspan for lift purposes. In addition, both wings interfere with each other. The low pressure zone in the upper surface of the lower wing is mixed with the high pressure zone in the lower surface of the upper wing. This causes the lower wing to generate very little lift. The upper wing is the one that generates most of the lift. To avoid interference, it is recommended to separate both wings at least 1.5 times the length of the wing cord. We have only separated them 9 cm, the equivalent of 1 times the length of the wing cord. Fortunately, we do not have all these crossbars and braces disturbing the airflow. We have put a few crossbars at the tips of the wings, which is precisely the useless area for lift purposes. Therefore, we calculate the wing area assuming that it has once and a half times the area of a single wing. This led us to compare our wing loading with that of a single wing aircraft. Therefore, we assume, for calculation purposes, that we have a wing area of 0.0594 square meters. The total weight of the aircraft is 166 grams, so the wing loading is 2.79 kilograms per square meter. In the first tests, we notice that the plane is not stable due to the propeller torque effect. It has an exaggerated tendency to roll in the opposite direction to the rotation of the propeller. This torque effect modify the aerodynamic balance of the aircraft. We could try using a smaller propeller to minimize this effect, but we think that in this case we would not have the necessary thrust to fly.
we have decided to mount a pair of symmetrical motors with the propellers turning in opposite directions. This setup generates a zero torque. We use a pair of N60 type brushed motors, arranged in parallel, with an ESC for brushed motors. The propellers are 3 inch diameter. This set provides a maximum thrust of 105 grams. In addition, we have provided a little dihedral angle to the wings to increase the lateral stability of the aircraft. To do this, we have tied the wings using threads. The weight of this second version is 188 grams. The center of gravity is 3.5 centimeters from the leading edge of the wing, which corresponds to 39% of the wing cord. The wing loading is 3.16 kilograms per square meter. The thrust to weight ratio is 0.56. This configuration stabilized the plane. Unfortunately, the flight time is only 2 minutes. The plane falls down when the battery reaches 7.58 volts. To increase the flight time, we use a 500 mAh two-cell battery. In this third version, we have placed the motors in the lower surface of the upper wing. The structure of the previous version had no rigidity, therefore, the motors vibrated excessively, losing energy and thrust. As we moved up the thrust line of the motors, we had to place the masses of the battery, the receiver, and the ESC as high as possible so that the center of gravity is also moved up. The center of gravity should be more or less at the same height as the thrust line. The weight of this third version is 197 grams. The center of gravity is still 3.5 centimeters from the leading edge of the wing. The wing loading is 3.32 kilograms per square meter. The thrust to weight ratio is 0.53. Flight autonomy has increased to 3 minutes. The plane falls down when the battery reaches 7.53 volts. For those who replicate this aircraft, it is recommended to cover the gap in the middle of the fuselage with adhesive tape to avoid the turbulence that it may cause. The final images of the aircraft flight are shown. And this is all, thanks. So. Yo no sé ni lo que ha hecho, es que como no lo ves... ¿Cómo va? ¿Va mejor? Yo creo que va culón. ¿Ahora va culón? No, pero va bien, ahora va bien. Se, se sigue girando el cabrón. Girando otra cosa, te lo trimo. No, no, déjalo así. Si esto le ha durado dos minutos la batería, esto ya se cae al suelo en un rato. La batería le da para tres minutos. Sí, pero es que el problema del brule es que luego tienen que ir dos variadores y ya dos brules, dos variadores ya sí, de verdad que el peso se te va un poquito de se te va de peso. No pasa nada, va más rápido y se acabó, pero que ya lo tienes que llevar mucho más rápido. Mira, ese está gastando la batería, ya no tira para arriba. Mira, ¿ves? se va quitando la batería, se va quitando la batería y se acabó.
Esta sin batería, ¿eh? Yeah. 